The Odd Pod. The Odd Pod. A chance to dip back into the archives today and play you a programme that was first broadcast 41 years ago in 1980, featuring the late, great David Collister. His voice and his programmes live on as a testament to his fantastic ability and historian Peter Kelly. And today they travel to the west of the island and look at Peel Cathedral in Kelly's Eye. <laughs> What's Kelly's eye looking at today? Well, perhaps it's unusual, David. I'm looking at a set of gates. Uh, an unusual set of gates, cast iron, although I'm afraid to say part of the gates are of recent construction. The pillars between the gates are in cast iron and they've got a sort of Gothic uh, tracery motif in. The tops of the pillars, the two centre ones, have had gas lights on, of which the brackets are still there. And the end two have two rather large balls. It's all painted red, and it's leading up a drive to a church, and we're in Peel. In fact, not a church, but a cathedral, they say. Well, it's now a cathedral, yes, built originally as a church. But the gates, um, I'm afraid I can't tell you where they're made. I'd like to tell you they're cast by Gellings Foundry, but I can't find any marks on them. Usually Gellings Foundry put uh, put their name somewhere on the side of, of a gate or on the lock block, but there's only one of the original gates left, and... Uh, there's no name on that. Perhaps the centre section came from Plato's? <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> Certainly the centre section is, is much more recent. Uh, it, I suppose it blends in, really. They haven't been able to copy the pattern, but they've simulated it, so uh, in driving past you wouldn't notice. These, uh, these are, are originally, though, the, the Victorian gates? Oh, very much so, yes, and the entrance up to the church, or cathedral as it is now. Now, I suppose I'd better tell you something about the church. It uh, was designed by a gentleman called uh, Thomas Denville Barry, who originally came from Cork and then moved to Liverpool in 1845, set up an architectural practice, joined later by his sons, it became T.T. Barry and Sons. And surprisingly, although you may never heard of them, they've actually designed five churches and chapels on the island, and that is this one here in Peel, uh, a chapel at Glen May, the church at Patrick, Church of Port St Mary and the Presbyterian Church at Ramsey. An impressive west window there, and what do I see at the top of the tower? Uh, are those figures heads or something? Like that? Well, yes, they're gargoyles. Uh, of course, they're the original version, medieval version, not on this church. Of course, they would spout water out from the roof, but here, of course, they're purely decorative, as the roof water is taken down in a pipe. But the church, David. Uh, once upon a time had a spire. In fact, it's had an unfortunate history, the church. Foundation stone was laid in August 1879 and the church was actually consecrated in October 1893. But on the 27th of February 1903, there was a great storm which resulted in the nave roof, that's the centre part, uh, collapsing. In fact, there are photographs in existence of this collapsed roof uh, they set to, they raised money, they re-roofed the church, and then lo and behold, just a few years later, in 1907, it was decided that the wooden spire, there was also a wooden spire on Braddon, mm -hmm. uh, had to come down, the foundations of the tower were insufficient, so they had to take the wooden spire down and rebuild part of the top of the tower, and in fact, some of the stones from uh, the base of the old spire are still to be found in and around the grounds of the church looked at from a distance people might say oh no not another red brick building no it's not red brick of course it's it's red sandstone and local sandstone too apart from the carvings on the top which are uh, probably from St B's head and on the windows to which you've referred it's very large though is that uh, something like its original size uh, what the church yes. oh yes very much so um, you see things that were done in Victorian times were built on the basis that the population was going to increase, uh, the towns were going to get bigger, and of course you got this in Douglas St Mary's Church when that was built in mm. 1859, or opened in 59, it was far too big for the Catholic population, but of course there was this great influx of visitors, and the same too here in Peel, there was a great potential, as with Ramsey, Port Air and Port St Mary, uh, for a visitor um, increase, 
but as we've seen, particularly in Port Heron on the promenade, where you get many gaps between the houses, it, it just didn't take off, and, and therefore they didn't get the promenade they deserved. So a lot of these things were built in anticipation of an increase of congregation, not, of course, as it's gone, which is a, a general decrease. Still, it's left a very impressive building here in Peel, hasn't it? It is, and in fact, it's surprising if you go down Michael Street and then down some of the small, what you'd almost call alleyways, streets leading off, you can actually see the spire uh, or the tower from down there, which uh, when you're up here in Athol Street, you wouldn't for the life of you think that it could be seen anywhere other than in the immediate vicinity. What height do you suppose that tower now is? Well, now you've posed me a question. I have to keep looking at six feet and go six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty-six. You're probably sixty feet or something to the top. We'll settle for that. Uh, it'll do me, David. <laughs> The Odd Pod. Odd Pod.